Dr. Richard Evans, who spoke to us tonight um, about the tobacco industry as a public health issue. And surprisingly, for some of us at least, you put this as, um, although an evidence-based presentation, you put it primarily as an ethical and um, just justice issue, not a cost-benefit issue, um, or even um, a democratic issue, but a, a social, uh, sorry, um, a justice and ethical issue. Uh, just to recap, what do you, what do you mean by that? Um, well, I s that's how I see this as an issue. The, the cost-benefit thing is one, one way of looking at it, but I see this primarily as an issue about people's health, which is being endangered unnecessarily um, by uh, tobacco as a product. And, <coughs> and as a doctor, that's what concerns me primarily. That's, it's, it's unnecessary deaths, it's unnecessary suffering, it's unnecessary disease. And um, that's why I came into public health, was to try and do something about that. Um, so that's how I would tackle tobacco as an issue. So quite happy to sort of use cost, cost benefit and cost effectiveness and all that <coughs> as a sort of a sub argument within that. But it's not the main argument for me. It's about yes, it's about justice and equity and ethics. And so you spoke about the health impacts, the medical impacts of um, smoking. You also spoke about the social. Um, impacts of, social, uh, of smoking on the different groups that they have high Im impact, uh, smoking has high impact amongst such as Māori, Pacific Island um, and young women. What do you see as the key solutions? Uh, what, what needs to happen to combat this at a public health level? Well I see tobacco as a societal problem, um, it's not an individual problem. Um, it's played out by individuals and the health effects of course affect individuals but fundamentally this is a societal and environmental um, political problem and the solutions will be at that sort of level. It's not, <coughs> not primarily at the individual level. If we want to really tackle smoking and the harm that it causes we have to, we have to address, uh, address policy type solutions, uh, structures of the market, economic levers, whatever works to reduce the number of people taking up smoking, encourage people who are smoking to quit, and to prevent exposure to secondhand smoke, which are the three big things in, uh, I think, in, in tobacco uh, control. So we need <coughs> policy type measures, I see, as the main driver for addressing that. Such as what? Um, well, there's a whole range. Um, there's, there's things we're doing at, at the moment, such as mass media campaigns, um, providing smoking cessation support, help helping smokers to quit. But I'm most interested in the ones that are um, acting at the policy level, things like increasing tax and duties on cigarettes to increase the price. It's a single most effective intervention, highly proven in every population. It's been studied around the world, as far as I'm aware, and yet we're not really using it to anything like its full extent, and really not at all for the last few years. So that's one thing. You were saying the last <coughs> eight years? The last eight years there's been no real increase in, in mm. um, cigarette prices in, in New Zealand. So so that's one, one solution. Um, but there's a whole range of other ones which we're really not using at all, and, and those are the ones that I'm particularly interested in. Um, and one, one side of that is the su supply side issue. So at the moment we have, say, 8,000, 10,000 um, shops retail outlets in New Zealand which sell tobacco. They're not licensed, they don't have to fulfill any conditions to sell tobacco despite it being a highly addictive and poisonous substance. Um, <coughs> and we should be addressing that. We should be saying, putting requirements on people who uh, sell tobacco, having licensing, we should be trying to reduce the numbers, we should be trying to reduce the density, we should maybe try and make them um, give quit support and sell quit support products. There's a whole range of things on the supply side that we could do, and we don't do any of that. And, and in fact, most places around the world don't do any of that either. You talked <coughs> about marketing, because uh, time's short on the tape here, you talked about marketing and regulatory framework, um, establishing a monopoly purchaser, a tobacco control authority, uh, reducing import quota, registering users, having prescription-only tobacco products, uh, um, time doesn't permit to cover all those. Brilliant ideas. People can listen to the um, podcast. But what would you see as um, perhaps one or two of the um, key ideas there that you'd really like to see um, pushed along? Well, I, th I think the fundamental idea here is, as I said, tobacco is a uniquely hazardous product. Uh, it's highly addictive. It's, it's just not like any other product, really, that we have in society. And, mm. it, and it requires unique 
measures. And those include changing the regulation to make it much more stringent and maybe changing the market structure. And for most products, you would say that's that sort of overkill, that's, that's, that's going too far. For tobacco, I don't think it is because it's such a, a unique product. So we need to be looking at those solutions that you mentioned. I, I haven't got a particular one of those that I want to say this is the way forward, but I think we need to be exploring solutions like that. And we need to be getting more ambitious and not saying, look, at the moment we've got 20% of the whole adult population smokes, much higher amongst, say, Maori, but 50%. But, mm. but the, the sort of targets we set are, oh, let's reduce smoking to, I know, 15% in 10 years' time. We're sort of saying, that's not good enough. This, this has got to stop. This is unnecessary suffering and deaths, and the next generation is going to be affected just as this generation is being affected now. We can't let that continue to happen. So we need to take some really proper steps, radical steps if you want to call them that, but I would just say they're sensible steps to do everything we can to set, stop the next generation of children being in the same situation as mm. this current generation has been, being addicted to nicotine in large numbers and dying from it. You're talking about uh, communication and reframing the discourse, um, basically, about how we talk about uh, smoking and what we expect to happen about it. Yeah, we need to be absolutely clear what we're talking about. We're talking about something that's a poisonous product, it's extremely hazardous. It kills one in two of its long-term users. There's pretty much no other product that you can imagine that does anything like that. Um, <clears throat> and because of that, we need to frame it in th those terms. We don't just need to think of smoking as a bit of a joke or it's a little, you know, it's a bit of a cheeky sort of thing to do, a bit risky. It's not a bit risky. It's deadly. And it needs to be talked about in those terms. Whenever we talk about tobacco, we need to be talking about it like as a poison, as an addictive drug. And, that's, and if you do that, then policymakers and the public will understand why we need really stringent, rigorous solutions to tackle the tobacco problem. And yet you were saying that the public, uh, particularly smokers, show very strong desire for um, tighter restrictions and um, changes of attitudes. It seems to be a, political, a lack of political will although, um, behind this. Yeah, I, th I think that all our research, um, and, and others too, from New Zealand and elsewhere, show that actually the public is largely supportive of a whole range of measures to address the, the tobacco issue. Um, <clears throat> so they're way ahead of the policymakers, and this is smokers and non-smokers, and we've got data, very convincing data on that, about various measures such as banning point-of-sale displays, um, pr modifying the product to make it less hazardous or less nicotine in it, and so on. Mm which have got strong support amongst smokers. Amongst the general public, it's almost overwhelming support. Um, and yet the policymakers really, and the politicians, are really not seeing this as a priority. Um, and what we need to do, I think, is, make, is to turn that support, which is, is still, although it's there, it's rather passive. It's and, not and how do we do that? How does Joe Bro, uh, and we've got 30 seconds left, how does <laughs> Joe Bro do that? Well. I would like people to get active, to do their bit, to mm. whether that be through talking to their MPs, writing letters, going, going on talkback shows, um, and, and talking to their, to their neighbours and friends, and, and making clear that this, uh, why this is a problem, why we need these rigorous solutions. We need a social movement for tobacco, just as we have for many other um, important issues in society.